Let's turn that boring corner pantry into a beautiful butler style pantry. In this video, we're going to show you how to build some beautiful wooden sliding drawers. Here's a detailed list of all the tools and supplies that you'll need for this project. We're moving along in our butler style pantry renovation. This is our final step in building our base cabinet. If you've been building along with us, you'll need to pull out your sizing and dimensioning. But if you still don't have a plan, please don't worry. Just head on over to our planning guide here to find out how. The link to our free cut list and rip list is in the description below. To figure out our measurements, we need to follow some simple steps of design. Decide the number of drawers you'd like and how you'd like them to look. We decided to have three drawers of different widths, all made of quarter cut white oak. But there are other beautiful woods that you can use as well, like maple or walnut or even cherry. Next, we need to figure out the maximum size of the drawers. And this will be dictated by the measurement T, which we figured out during our base cabinet frame design. We also need to account for extra space needed between the drawer fronts and the top. These gaps are needed for the drawers to be able to function properly. We recommend 1 16th of an inch between the drawers and a quarter of an inch on top. The individual width is of course personal choice, but the minimum we recommend is 3 8 of an inch in total. So to finalize the drawer front widths and proportions, you want to make them visually pleasing to the eye. We like to have a slight overhang on both sides as you can see where the arrows are pointing here. It gives a nice seamless look as we want it to completely cover the joints on the right. Just make sure you're mindful of your measurements that you've made in your plan as you don't want your drawers to be interfering with one another. The length of the drawer fronts are just the measurement S plus the overhangs that we've decided upon. Next, you'll need to design your drawer boxes. First, decide on the depth that you would like each drawer to be. Each drawer box can actually have a different depth. When you're planning, consider what do you want to store in each drawer? Will there be any small appliances? What's the maximum height of that storage? This will dictate the function of the drawer. But remember, the maximum extension of the drawer can be any more than what we measured as a letter E from our initial planning, from our sizing and dimensioning video. Of course, if you don't have a swinging door, then this measurement is invalid and you just use your maximum extension, which is the max extension of the drawer slides plus the drawer front thickness. Next, we need to consider there's gaps that are necessary on all sides of the drawer boxes. This allows room for the drawer slides to smoothly function and it's dependent on the type of drawer slides that you've chosen. So make sure to read the instructions. Finally, you need to calculate the final measurements of the box. The width of the box has a maximum measurement of E and the length of the box is the measurement S minus the gaps that are needed on both sides, which again are dictated by the drawer slides that you choose. Before you build your boxes, we recommend installing your drawer slides. This will make sure that you can double check your measurements and that it will fit perfectly. We chose the Tandem Blue Motion Undermount Drawer Slides as we love the look of them and they can hold up to 30 kilograms per drawer. We also highly recommend the Craig Drawer Slide Jig. It's absolutely incredible and makes installing these drawer slides an absolute breeze. Literally all you have to do is measure to the height of the base of the drawer, measure according to the slide instructions how far back your slide has to sit, ours is 1.5 centimeters, hold your jig in place or clamp it if you can, and drill those slides in. It is that simple. On the side where it's not a corner, we recommend clamping the jig to hold it in place. And to make sure that the drawer slides are level, we recommend just placing a piece of wood across the two jigs and checking that it's level. Then you can drill them in and be confident that they're level. We are absolutely in love with these drawer slides. Even fully weighted, they glide so smoothly and we're just so impressed. We're not associated with this company at all, but we just have to give a shout out and say that they make an incredible product. Even now, over a year later, they are still gliding smoothly and perfectly. So now that we've designed the drawer boxes, it's time to build them. Our overall dimensions have been figured out, but now you have to decide how you cut the plywood and put together the boxes. We used a simple rabbit joint and groove style, cut with dado blades on our table saw, and then glued and nailed together. In our simple design, the base of the drawer sits in the grooves on the sides and the faces. So our base of our drawer has no cuts. 
On the one long edge of both the front and back faces, we created a groove which is slightly inset, about 3 eighths of an inch, to accept the base of the drawer. And on both of the short edges, for the rabbit joint, we use the dado blade to cut directly to the edge. The details of the depth and width of the dado cuts are in the slide above. Both sides of the drawer have one dado blade cut, which is a groove the thickness of the plywood inset slightly in order to accept the base of the drawer. We used half inch plywood sheets in order to make these drawers. So just remember to plan how much plywood you would need. We were able to cut the pieces for all six of our drawers from just two four by eight foot plywood sheets. We're ready to cut the plywood for the drawers. Cut the pieces to the exact length and width that you've planned. Before you do any further assembly, we highly recommend dry fitting in your drawer fronts. This way you can make sure you've got the length perfect. Next, we added the dado blades to our table saw and we cut the inset grooves and the edges. To assemble the drawer boxes, simply lay out your pieces and begin gluing. Make sure to get enough of the glue into those grooves. Then simply place the base of the drawer into the groove of the back face. Then add the left and right sides, followed by the front face. And you can see how perfectly they fit together. Make sure to clamp and then secure the joints with a nail gun. After we've done a couple of the corners, we like to check with a carpenter square and make sure that the corners are actually square. If they are, then we continue to nail the rest of the corners. Then simply repeat this process for all the other drawers. Next, we need to add the hardware for our drawers to be able to be accepted into our drawer slides. Depending on the drawer slides that you choose, it will be a little bit different. For our undermount slides, we needed a cutout in the back. We used a Bosch multi-tool to cut those out. But if you don't have a multi-tool, you can also use a hand saw and a chisel and just chisel out the area that needs to be cut out. This way, if you don't have a multi-tool, you can still do this. Then we simply need to drill a hole into the back, which we will set the drill collar to the required depth. And this hole accepts the hook at the back of the drawer slide. To finish these drawers properly, we're going to sand them with 100 grit sandpaper all over to create a smooth finish and so that there's no sharp edges for any fingers to get cut or caught on. It's up to you whether you'd like to use an even lower grit sandpaper to make it even smoother. For us, since we're going to have these boxes in the kitchen drawers, we wanna make sure to protect them from any water spillage. So we're going to apply some of our favorite wood protector, the Osmo Pollux Oil. This is an excellent finish and it's very protective. We highly recommend it. You can just apply it generously with an old sock and then immediately wipe it off with another clean sock. We can't say enough about how easy these drawer slides are to use. It's so quick and easy to slide these drawers in and out. So place them all in just to make sure it all looks great and is working properly. You should be able to slide these Bloom Blue Motion drawer slides quite easily. They should be really quiet, smooth, and the soft close is just a dream. Now, all we have left to do is just to add our beautiful drawer fronts and we'll be all finished. We like to use raw lumber and then joint two sides, one edge and one face, and then plane the other side and cut the other edge with our table saw. However, if you don't have all of these tools, you can get the lumber store to do this for you. If you do have the tools, it's definitely cheaper to buy the raw lumber. Now we're just going to cut the boards, adding an extra one inch length to each board, and we will cut it to the exact measurements after we glue it. Next, orient your boards into a way that's pleasing to the eye, and then mark where your biscuit joints are going to be, and biscuit joint all the edges that have joints. We really love our DeWalt biscuit jointer. It's so fun and easy to use. If you're looking for more detailed instructions on how to biscuit joint, check out our video here on our channel on how to make a wooden countertop. And we have a detailed instruction there. We like to biscuit joint as the biscuits help prevent slippage while gluing and create a stronger joint. It's time to glue and clamp our boards. Gluing really truly is easiest with two sets of hands. So try and gather some help. 
Our favorite wood glue is the Tight Bond 3 Ultimate Wood Glue. It really is a fantastic glue. You need to work fairly quickly, but it gives you enough time to be able to place the biscuits into the joints. Just make sure to cover the biscuits and all the surfaces that need to be glued together with the glue. We like to use a rubber mallet to help push the boards together. Once you've got your boards all glued together to the right width for your drawer front, then you'll need to clamp them. We like to use wood calls that we make homemade with top tape on one side so the glue doesn't make them stick together. This helps prevent the warped boards from creating an edge that's not flat. Just add as many clamps and calls as necessary to get those boards completely flat. Then we like to use a little scraper to just scrape off the excess glue. It should be oozing out just slightly when it's properly clamped. Once the glue has completely dried, we like to plane both faces down to the desired thickness. This creates a smooth and flat surface. Then we headed back on over to the table saw and cut each of our drawer fronts down to the exact length from our plants. We used a belt sander to sand all of the front faces of the drawer fronts. This is a quick and easy way to do this. Just make sure that you move with the grain of the wood when using a belt sander. Once you've achieved a nice smooth surface, then we recommend sanding the edges and corners by hand for more accuracy. Our most useful tip for installing your drawer fronts is to cut supports that are the exact height of the kick plate. This way you can just place your drawer front on it, make sure that it's level, and add shims if necessary to ensure the drawer front is completely level. Before we start to secure the drawer fronts, we like to dry fit all of the drawer fronts to make sure that they are perfect. So we add shims that are the exact thickness of the gaps that we decided upon in the plan. Ours are 1 16th of an inch. Then we have a look and if it all looks perfect, then we remove the upper drawers and secure the bottom front first. We highly recommend doing the bottom first as this way you'll know it's level and the other ones are significantly easier to place on. Now it's time to secure those drawer fronts to the drawer box. We use cabinet clamps to clamp the drawer front to the box and then pre-drill the holes. We use two on each side. Then we use a countersink bit in order to countersink those screws a little so they don't interfere with the functioning of the drawer. Then double check that it's level once you remove the supports and the shims. And if it's level, you're ready to move on. And look how nice and smoothly this drawer moves. It looks gorgeous. Then simply repeat this process on the other side if you're building a corner cabinet. Then place the next drawer box in and clamp them in the same manner with the shims to create the correct gap. And then simply secure them in the exact same manner. Then we just repeat this process until we've added all of our beautiful drawer fronts. Another top tip is to align the edges using a straight edge or a straight piece of wood. Make sure to double check before drilling that your drill bit is the right depth so you don't puncture the fronts of your beautiful drawers. Now we need to protect these stunning drawer fronts. We love the Osmo Pollux Oil. It's an excellent finish. I'll put the link in the description below. Just apply it rubbing along the grain of the wood in the same way that we did in the boxes. Apply it all over and as soon as you've finished, you can wipe it off with a clean rag. Lastly, we'll add our drawer pulls. We recommend using a center finding ruler to find the exact center of the drawer. Then you're just going to mark the holes where you need to drill and drill the holes through the front and the box. We like to use a Forstner drill bit so the screw has enough length to make it all the way through. Then just simply screw them in. And of course you can use any kind of drawer pull that you like and just make sure to account for the distance that your drawer pull sticks out so that it's not going to interfere with your drawers. If for some reason you didn't think of this, you can also buy drawer pulls that just sit on the top and don't take up much space in your drawer. And there we have it. We have gorgeous drawers that I can use to store whatever I like in my pantry. If you'd like to see some organizational tips in a video, please let me know in the comments below. We sure hope that you've loved watching along with us as we finished our corner pantry base cabinet. If you found these videos helpful and you've enjoyed them, please give us a thumbs up and please leave us a positive comment. It just warms our hearts.
Coming up next, we're going to show you how we built, installed, and finished our gorgeous floating shelves. They are truly the perfect addition to your kitchen pantry. The sixth step in our do-it-yourself butler's pantry renovation. Please like, hit that bell, and subscribe to our channel to find out when our next video comes out. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, bye-bye.